Hi, it's King Mob, full of beans, on Radio Lewis. This week, we're doing like a contest or a home quiz or an armchair thing, where I'm going to play singles that you might or you might not know, and then I'm going to ask you to decide, is it a hit or was it a miss? There you go. That's the John Barry Seven uh, with the theme from Tupac Shuri. It's a fab show from the 60s where uh, boring people um, decided whether or not songs would be a hit that week or a miss. Of course, that was in a time when many fabulous singles came out every week, along with a few duds. Anyway, speaking of duds, I before we get the old quiz and the fun thing going, I have to apologise about last week's show. Um, Lord Beezer apparently drunk on air, incontinent. I mean, the most worrying thing about it is actually um, listener feedback has been great and they want him back. So uh, I guess at some point in the future <laughs> we'll allow Lord Beezer back in the studio, but not too quickly because the man's a mess. You know, I'm, I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, it's just a mess. His life is just, it's fractured. Anyway, back to the game. Now, here's a track by DJ Sammy, who you may have heard of. A great singer called Sharon Wolf, who you may have heard of. I never heard of her. And a guitar sample by Mr. Rory Gallagher. And this track is called Rockstar. But was it a hit or was it a miss? Okay, let's go.
Anyway, great though that was, complete miss. Nobody went for it. So I should have a sound effect, really. Um, <laughs> it's really pathetic. But that's the best I can do at short notice. That's the sound effect that I'm going to use from now on throughout the show for hit or miss. And on to our next hit or miss, a fantastic singer now, uh, Bobby Womack. And boy, when this single came out, uh, 90s, I think. I, whoa, I was crazy for it. But was it a hit? Or was it a miss? I'm looking for a love. I'm looking for a love. I'm gonna find. I've got to find some love. I've got to find a love. I'm looking for a love. Every day I'm looking for a love. I'm looking for a love. Well, I'm and I'm looking here and there. And I'm searching everywhere. And I'm looking. That's another miss. How did people miss that one? We're just talking about this here in the studio. I mean, like these uh, great tracks and all this stuff, and and uh, people just—it's timing, is what I think it is. I think that records come out. Some records come out they're way ahead of the time, or they're just behind it, or whatever. But anyway, there's Bobby Womack, who is—I don't know if you know the story, but. Um, Bobby was uh, Sam Cooke, who was another great hitmaker. He was his protege. And um, when Sam died, too young, um, <laughs> Bobby, Bobby Womack was like half, half her age, married Sam Cooke's wife uh, within two months of Sam Cooke's death. And that really alienated people in the soul music community, which is why for a long... I never understood why people would say, yeah, Bobby Womack. But it was... Kind of a little untimely. So timing being everything. Um, even Elvis. I mean, when Elvis came back uh, in 1968 with the TV special, um, he'd been really dead in the water for years. I mean, he kind of had hits, but they were those kind of, you know, bomb of the top 40 things. He was stuck in all those lousy movies. But when he came back in 1968 with the comeback TV special, wow, and, uh, you know, unbroken chain of stuff. Uh, in the ghetto, suspicious minds, Polk salad, Annie, and then this one. But was it a hit or was it a miss? <laughs> I 
that my eyes are on you, baby, since a long time ago. Now I finally got the nerve, and I'm gonna make my move. Now don't you try to turn me off, 'cause it's gonna be hard to do. I got a thing about you, baby. Ain't nothing I can do. I got a thing about you, baby. A thing about loving you. About it, baby, your love was meant for me. Know that I can't do without it. It fits me to a T. Ooh, there's something about you, baby, can't get you off my mind. I know that I can't live without you. I think about you all the time. I got a thing about you, baby. Ain't nothing I can do. I got a thing about you, baby. I think about loving you. Ain't it just like a woman when she knows she's got a man? She'll ring you out and turn you about in the palm of her hand. And then she starts thinking that maybe she'll put you in a bind. She'll give you just a little love and it'll drive you out of your mind. I got a thing about you, baby. Ain't nothing I can do. I got a thing about you, baby. A thing about loving you. I got a thing about you, baby. Ain't nothing I can do. I got a thing about you, baby. A thing about loving you. I got a thing about you, baby. Well, there you go. Actually, it was a teeny tiny hit, but really, it was this last? No, I, I, I've got a, I've got an effect for that as well. The effect for the hit goes, ding. That's it. I could hold it another <coughs> a couple of beats. Ding. That's better. We'll go with the two beat version. Um, so there's L and uh, with thing about your baby. Another cute thing about that track. It's one of those tracks where each verse adds a different instrument, so you get this nice build. And plus, Sissy Houston is singing the backup vocals, who is Whitney Houston's mum. And I think that's... <clears throat> I, I'm not sure who's on guitar, but it's a boy. Really cool record, and was just a tiny, teeny, tiny hit. Okay. Let's deal with the who. <laughs> Surprise. I know that you have Cause there's magic in my eyes I can see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles Oh yeah If you think that I don't know The little tricks you play And never see you When deliberately you put things in my way Well here's a poke at you You're gonna choke on it too You're gonna lose that smile Because all the while I can see for miles and miles I can see for miles and miles I can see for miles Of my trust in you and I was so far away I saw you holding lots of other guys And now you've got the nerve to say That you still want me Well that says maybe But you gotta stand trial Because all the while I can see for miles and miles I can see for miles and miles
Pete Townsend. Wow, what a songwriter. But that one was a bit of a shock for him. Actually, it was a hit. Ding! I wonder if that's C sharp. Um, it was a hit for him, but not big. And they'd had a run of really good hits, My Generation, and, uh, Pictures of Lily, and uh, suddenly he got a bit of a shock, actually. And he mentioned this in an interview, that that made him think that the Who were, like, disposable, like a pop group. Like, they'd had some hits, and then you have less hits, then it's like a wind-down, and then it's eventually goodbye, or the vintage circuit. Not that there was a vintage circuit then. So, out of that experience, and it's a great single, by the way, I love it, it was one of my favourites by the Who, um, but it really didn't do the business, and wrong timing, or they'd been around, and new people were coming up in the 60s. Out of that experience, he sat down and wrote Tommy. And that cemented their place in a whole different way outside of the singles market. But we're not interested in albums and concept albums. We will be at some point. But today, we're interested in singles. And like this one by Sophia. Was it a hit or was it a miss? But I guess I was wrong You only see the things you convinced yourself you saw But like you said, I guess, yeah Maybe I'm blind Well, why don't you open your eyes? You might like what you find Cause I've been waiting for such a long time Your love is still Fresh in my mind And oh my love Though I wait Can't you see I can't wait forever For you to say you love me Your love is still 
That's a great record, and it came out in the early part of the century and was a... <laughs> Why? Again, timing. Missed the slip between the cracks, but it's a great record. And sometimes I play that to people and they go, wow, that's just absolutely fantastic. I hope you feel the same way. And uh, that's the educational power of, of radio to expose people to new music they haven't heard before, which is kind of what the King Mob show is all about, along with filthy gags and vague surrealism and the occasional downright lie. And uh, 1982, I think this record came out, next one, uh, Rocky Burnett, I uh, tired of towing the line. And um, was it a hit? You've just played oh. Rocky Burnett. Have I? No, I haven't. Yes, you have. That was what it was, wasn't it? No. No, we just played... Uh, I changed the thing and we oh, played cool. Sophia. Right. Silence. No, it's fine. Then let's, let's have an on-air argument. Let's, <laughs> let's clear the air here. I don't... I don't <laughs> just because I don't mind having an on-air argument with you, Ben, because in this case, rarely, I was right. <laughs> and you, Mostly, you're right and I'm wrong. So we don't want to... But in this case, leave this in the show because I'm right. <laughs> Here's Rocky Burnett, tired of towing the line.
Well, Rocky's version didn't make it, which makes it... <sighs> the good news is, for the songwriter anyway, um, the song was actually a hit uh, a few years later. Um, the remarkable Welsh wizard, uh, Shakin Stevens, who used to play for Cardiff City, was a left-winger. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um he had a hit with it, and um, it was rubbish. <laughs> I'm sorry, but compared to Rocky, Rocky's just dynamic, and he's got that popping falsetto high note, and Shaky was just dismal, really. Anyway, bless him. Um, now, the next one, really, I, I mean, let's play the game. Is it a hit or is it a miss? But actually, this one's a no-brainer because it's my record, and it's a, it's a song I put out in the early 80s. And if it had been a hit, it would have led to an unbroken chain of success. I would be living the fat life on a big house on the hill. I'd have a wife half my age who wanted a new kitchen every six months and a complete team of lawyers, accountants and independent financial advisors bleeding me dry. Hey, maybe it's... Quite appealing. Anyway, so I put the, the next song I put out, uh, 1982, and uh, I can tell you now it was a, but it's a fabulous record if I say so myself, and I do. It's called Nine O'Clock. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's nine o'clock by Little Snips. And am I bitter about that? That my record company, who should be nameless, EMI, really screwed up on that record, even though it was like Kid Jensen's record of the week. And like the video was on Swap Shop with the fabulous Noel Edmonds and blah. And am I bitter? Actually, I am a bit. But then I have a coffee and a laugh and a giggle. And uh, I do the radio show. And, you know, life is uh, actually weird. Anyway, but that's not your problem. Let's get back onto that hit and miss vibe thing, like DJ thing that I'm doing now. And here's a related single. It came out within, I think, two or three months of nine o'clock. 
And it's kind of like part of an in-family thing. The drummer, um, Steve Young, from Holly and the Italians, uh, is on that track, Nine O'Clock. The bass player from Holly and the Italians um, was my tennis partner in the 70s. Um, the great singer, Holly, um, and guitar player, had been in a band with my wife, who was a bass player, Jackie. And they played together in a three-piece outfit with this guy that they ditched because he was like a Dylan impersonator. And that was Mark Knopfler. And the story's true that, that uh, Holly um, was playing, I think, yeah, my wife would be playing bass. I think Holly would, be, yeah, she would be playing drums then. She was a drummer. That's right. So my wife and Holly were a rhythm section behind Mark Knopfler. And uh, Mark loved Holly for years afterwards, and even though they dumped him from the band, whatever happened to Mark Knopfler? And um, so when Holly put it together, um, we were all pals, and they got signed by Virgin, huge deal. And uh, Richard Branson, God, he loved Holly. He loved Holly so much, he named his daughter after her. He was, she was born around that time. And they looked great, they sounded great, and here's their first single, but was it a hit or was it a miss? Yeah, well, unfortunately, that also was... So, Holly and the Italians, if you're out there, guys, and I know you are, actually, Mark, I still um, correspond with, and I saw him a few years ago in New York. He lives in New York now. Steve, I don't know where the hell he is. I actually bumped into Steve Young, just completely out of the blue, in Virgin Records, 
in New York somewhere in 1990s when I was there doing a film thing. Actually just bumped into the guy. We went for a coffee together. Great drummer. So he's on both 9 o'clock and tell that girl to shut up. But neither of them were hits. Okay. What's next, you might ask? So same with me, actually. But I know what it is. It's hot chocolate. Now, hot chocolate, come on. On broken chain of winners, sexy thing and blah, and good-looking singer with the shaven, with the bald head thing. I never forget, back in the 70s, my girlfriend and her sister came to stay with us. Um, and we were watching... By the way, her sister's on death row now in Bali, but that's another story. Um, we we were sitting watching Top of the Pops, and, and hot chocolate came on. And there he is, Errol, with his shit. And she, she, his, my sister's girlfriend, she just said, I'd love to sit on his head. i never forget it.
That's hot chocolate with mindless boogie. And that's a very cautious ding because actually it was right at the end of their run of hits and only just scraped the bottom end of the chart. Actually, it's one of my favourites. I really, really like that track. I noticed that they lifted the keyboard line from Eskimo by The Residents. So that's just... But anyway, pop music take from here you take from there it's we're all magpies we're all thieves as long as it makes a great record that's fabulous and here's a here is a great record uh, by a guy from the faroe islands i didn't think the faroe islands was a real place you know you hear about it on the fishing report or whatever did i just say that i listened to the fishing thing no i don't anyway but the faroe islands it's is is out there and dogger uh, fair i'm doing it again I really shouldn't, at my age, be sitting listening to the fishing weather forecast, should I? Anyway, here's Tighter with uh, Catherine the Waitress. you like 
to me Lord you are so good to me Yes all you are so good to me oh. That was tighter and I'm afraid <laughs> But interestingly enough the song lives on and has been covered by a number of female artists um so obviously female singers like Beautiful waitresses, the same way Taita does. Mm. But are you just a little too slow? Too Slow by uh, Crystal Method, and it may be and is a club anthem, and you might hear that track a lot. But you know what? Wasn't a hit. <laughs> Now, this next song, was it, was it a hit? <laughs> Listen, this song is called <laughs> Take It and Shove It. Shove it up your big fat ass You know you're the reason we're true I'm tired of all the yelling And the fights that we had Hey, they won't be cause of you Hey, you moan and you groan And you bitch and you whine You make every beef we got last Well, I'm telling you, baby I'm true with you Take your love, shove it up your big fat ass Hey, I'm better off being all by myself Like fucking Celine Dijon Take you out for dinner and a dance in a show You hate all the people and food I'm happy, I'm laughing and fun all the time You're always in a bad mood I always look forward, I never look back But you bitch, you dwell in the past So I'm telling you, baby, I'm through with you Take your love, shove it up your fucking ass Let me hear the band Oh, that's a good band Let me hear the trombone That ain't a fucking trombone, sorry. Ah, that's a trombone. Yeah, let me hear that tinkling. 
piano. That ain't tinkling, that's rolling. That's fucking tinkling. I knew you could do it. Let me hear it. Come on, get going. I'll go. Why would you take your love, shove it up your ass? You know you're the reason we're through. I'm tired of all the yelling and the fights we had. They're all because of you. You moan and you groan and you bitch all the time. You make every beef we got last. I'm telling you, I'm true with you. Stick it up, you big fat ass. You thought you had charm, you thought you had class. You ain't nothing but a big fat ass. Take your love, shove it up. That's, uh, listen, how come that wasn't a hit? I, Vincent uh, LaGuardia Gambini, I mean, uh, what happened? I would have thought that would have been just an enormous uh, record. I can't believe that why DJs didn't play that track. Uh, I certainly love it, and I, I hope you're now converted. And anyway, <laughs> end of a wonderful show, as always, and congratulations to everyone and for playing our kind of music. Anyway, that's what David Jacobs always used to say on his radio show. And I love David Jacobs. And so I'm going to give one more spin on the play out to the in tribute to the great DJ. Um, I'm going to play It's All Miss. <laughs> 